all right and here are my first electronic circuits the second tier one circuit i'm gonna make about three stacks of these actually i'm gonna make four stacks of these and then i'm gonna use three stacks to make a stack of the electronic processors um just in case i need to do mv related stuff and then so i'll have a stack of mv circuits and a stack of lv circuits one thing i do kind of wish that was done i mean this is not necessary we did this for interactions but um you know how it's called circuit good and circuit basic this kind of ties back in when i was talking about having good nomenclature so you can help your players understand progression in a pack they're called circuit basic because it's called basic circuits but really all you use a circuit basic for is mostly lv related materials right lv extractors lv robot arms you don't use it for any mv related stuff and then there's some custom craft tweaker related um items you have down the line but my opinion just just call it circuit lv right I think that'll help develop the association in players players minds about what it's used for so instead of looking up circuit insane right i have to look up circuit elite so that's just that's just one of the few uh, minor nitpicks you can get used to these quirks if you just you know look up uh circuit or dictionaries in in the pack and you just like shift over them in uh jei you can show you what or dictionary it uses also if it wasn't obvious already when i was talking about rubber and sulfur is that you can have a really high rubber output so right here is that this outputs 1296 millibuckets of rubber if my math is correct that's like what nine that's like quote unquote nine ingots of rubber or nine rubber uh, sheets and this is raw rubber pulp <laughs> this is basically rubber multiplication <laughs> instead of ore multiplication is for rubber you just extract raw rubber pulp or centrifuge it if you want the additional glue and you and you will be using glue later down the line anyway right because if you want to make a lot of basic coated circuit boards which is the basis for a lot of these processors excuse me sir so like i was saying right this is just the better way to process rubber Okay, so I wired up my uh, lithium processing area, or lithium slash sodium slash silicon area. Very simple, right? All I did was I just added extra energetic alloy conduits, which leads into a four times conductive iron cable. I have actually five LV machines here running, right? This is five LV machines attached to a four times conductive iron cable. And most people would be wondering, wait, I thought each machine can only take in one amp. So how is this supporting five machines? Because this is like one of the functions of how Greg Tech energy systems work with cables is because if you look at this recipe here that I'm using to pulverize gravel, it only uses 10 EU per tick, which means that this um, CEF and this conductive iron cable, right? This conductive iron cable can transfer for up to 32 EU per tick, and this only uses 10. So what it actually means is that instead of receiving 10 EU per tick every single tick from the CEF, instead about every four ticks, it will receive one full packet of 32 EU per tick. So every single tick, the CEF will check hey, does this macerator need energy? And by set, by what I mean, it doesn't need energy. Does it have enough room to accept 32 EU? If it doesn't, it'll move on. And it repeats over and over. So the thing is, all of these macerators, in fact, this could actually even be done with a 1x conductive cable, but I didn't use that because it would burn up because of CEF at minimum, the smallest level CEF outputs four ramps. So that's why I had to use a 4x conductive iron cable. Once again, like I was saying is that one amp cables can cover these three because what's it's going to do is that once every three ticks, it'll check back again with the macerator on average saying, hey, now you have enough energy. Now I'll push out a packet. And in, I could be wrong. Don't quote me on this. But if I recall, Greg Tech Community Edition uses a push based packet system. For example, in 1.7.10 Greg Tech, I could put a 1x conductive iron cable, right? A 1x conductive iron cable, and that can only handle one amp. It would not burn. It would not burn until I put a machine down and then that machine would request amp amperage from the CEF and then the cable would burn up. But here, the second I put a 1x uh, conductive iron cable against the CEF, it'll burn immediately. Like, so that's the difference between the push and pull based packet system. This does mean that there's something wrong with your setup. You'll, you'll find out immediately. <laughs> that, that's the biggest difference. Whereas before, it's like you won't figure out that something is wrong with your setup in the first place until you start having electricity flowing through it. Which, I mean, overall, I'm indifferent. I don't think there's a big gameplay difference between the two, but I, I could be wrong about it. Now, backing up to this, you can see here the big bottleneck isn't actually the macerators or producing cobble is producing water because this uses this uses a crap ton of water right if i wanted this to be running all the time i would actually need about a thousand a bucket of water every second which translates to like 50 millibuckets per tick the best infinite water source is technically using um applied energistics annihilation planes on the water infinite water source but here like the compact solution is a dense infinite water source so i could technically meet the requirements with a dense 
it's infinite water source but that's so much wrought iron that's like six times eight times eight wrought iron i, di I didn't need aluminum that fast in fact i can't even process it yet because i still need an mv level cef so i was like whatever as long as it runs constantly i'm okay and this automates the aluminium, so that's like a very simple fix. Oh, well, what do you know? Looks like it was part of this link. So, so here's another thing. I think FTB Quests, there is going to be support to allow custom images inside FTB Quests. I'm not sure if it's in there yet, but I was talking to Latvian Modder about it, so that's another plug for FTB Quests. But yeah, I'm assuming this is the image that I was talking about. If you click on this link inside the quest book, and it's located, it's actually located in um, here, in the early game tab, just once you go through a little bit of the basic circuit progression, you can see what I was talking about with how the tiering works with the circuits. And now that I got my electronic processor, oh, look at that, MVCEF. I can now take this MVCEF and just uh, smack a dab it right here onto this transformer. And now I should actually have the lithium, lithium aluminum silicon processing area set up. This setup can actually be compacted a bit because if you just make sand from the classic deposition inside the Ignis extruder, you can also do it. The main thing is I'm just, I, it's just a little bit expensive. I have to use man infused ingots and I don't want to sidetrack myself to do that at the moment. But you can, if you want, making all yourself the erothium dust, the cryothium dust, and the petrothium dust. That's, that's completely fine. I just thought this setup, mostly Greg Tech oriented. And like, I think this looks dope, dope as hell, man. Like this looks so cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if you just saw that in the recording, but so uh, I, I, I should have been paying attention on my own, but this uh, MVCEF actually fried my transformer, which is a bit interesting. I wonder to know why. Maybe I because I didn't have it in the step down uh, functionality. Uh, so let me make another transformer. Actually, what am I talking about? This is a CEF MV, so I could just plug this sucker right into the advanced electrolyzer. I don't even need a transformer. Huh. So this basically did me a favor. Okay, I'll roll with it. Perfect. And in fact, this is kind of overkill because this is actually outputting um, four amps of MV, and I only really need one amp of MV. But, you know, it's been done and made. Don't really care much for it. Now, the other problem is I just need to... I'm probably going to set up four drawers, like I said before, with storage upgrades, and that should have all my silicon and aluminum aut automated. Perfect. I have it right here. And there's also other ways to get aluminum. I think I briefly touched this earlier is that you can use uh, deep mob learning to do it. That's really just up to you if you wanted to do it that way. I personally, I didn't want to use deep mob learning. Plus, this also makes silicon dust. In fact, is there a deep mob learning way to make silicon dust? No. Yeah, so if I'm doing this anyway to make silicon, might as well just might as well just uh, get the aluminum for free. If I go to the loot fab, let's check the uses of the loot fab. What can I make with it? So I can make gold ingots. I can make aluminum dust. Sure, that's cool. I can make tin ingots. Okay, cool, cool. Lead ingots, also cool. Uh, silver, copper. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, it's funny. You can make coins out of here from pristine slime matter. Okay, I see you. I see you. Okay, so <laughs> earlier I was talking about how like trash tier numismatic dynamos are because you have to burn coins and that's basically resources. But I guess if you have high tiered pristine slime matter, so let's look at this real quick. So it's 30% per polymer clay. I, I just want to know if this was infinite, if these numbers were tested to be infinite. I'm assuming they are. I don't know why else they would be in there if that was the case. Because two gold coins is 80,000. One platinum coin is 80,000 RF. So four nickel coins, that's pretty good. Four nickel coins is 240,000 RF. Eight copper coins is 240. Six silver coins is also 240. So it's copper, silver, nickel are the, that's the, that's the baller ones. And then you get about 30% from each, roughly about from each uh, polymer clay. Pretty interesting how those numbers stack up. Really, really curious. In fact, it's funny because instead of using these item condos, I could put a jar controller on here. That might actually be better. I can output directly into the jar controller. Oh yeah, that might be better. And that's so cheap. Yeah, let's just use a jar controller instead. I'm gonna make two jar controllers just in case. And beautiful, look how fast that was. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll probably throw on a void storage upgrades on sodium because I don't need that much of it, but I always want as, as much aluminum and silicon as possible, so I'll leave those to be the limiting factors. Sodium I, I could care less about. Okay, so some quick updates what's been going on. I ended up uh, splitting some of my power here. So I added another CEF that's dedicated to the blast furnace and also this macerator I put in off to the side. This alloy smelter also gets power from the CEF, but really it rarely used that specific alloy smelter anyway. Uh, this still has its own CEF dedicated, so this will power all my uh, the rest of my LV crafting array. Also, now that my aluminum silicon automation area is done, there's actually an endivore here 
that I replaced the old infinite water source and it just, it just ended up being a lot faster. Also, it's actually fairly amount cheaper. It is a little bit less compact, but I mean, that doesn't really bother me. It's just a two by two. So this should actually take care of my aluminium, aluminium, silicon, and lithium requirements for the rest of the game, to be honest. That's pretty exciting. Next, I also made another CEF. I just had this power ring, the power release oven, and I was using that just to get a lot of phenol earlier, but I already talked about that. I also added a magnum torch. I, I forgot these were in the pack, to be honest, or a mega torch, sorry. I, I didn't even know these were in the pack and they're the default recipe, so I just had one here. Uh, and then lastly, I just recently set myself up a trial uh, keystone just to get some trials going. So if you guys aren't familiar how trials work in deep mob learning, it's a way to actually um, a, develop data models easier because you know when you have to use get kills well first of all I didn't mention this earlier but you can level up data models also inside a simulation chamber each iteration will give you additional information or data on the data model wow that I said that a lot kill mobs in a trial you'll actually get a bonus I'm not actually sure what it was I think it's you get five data um, per kill when you actually use a trial keystone I, I actually can't remember but I know it's more than one and the main reason why you want to use a trial keystone in the first place is because of well aside from getting rewards you can get um, corrupted glitch hearts so when you have like a self-aware model that you're doing you can get a corrupted glitch hearts and then you can actually use these glitch hearts to make uh, glitch armor well you could technically use them to make glitch fragments and then you can use those fragments to make glitch ingots which lets you make uh, glitch infused armor and it's funny because the armor seems to be left at its default it's just weird because it's like probably the most powerful chest plate available in the game aside from oh okay you know the flux infused chest plate assembly actually i think it might actually be stronger than flux infused once you take away infinity uh wyvern and draconic it it's up there in fact i'm hmm I don't think it's stronger than uh, the ultimate chest plate from Armor Plus, but it's it's definitely up there. But considering the complexity, it's in my opinion, I think it should be nerfed. Like just just flat out, I think I, I think it should be nerfed. Its recipe is just way too easy compared to the other recipes. Like diamond just requires titanium, which is a bit awkward. That seems like a really unfair uh, recipe. That pretty much uh, wraps up the small quick updates. So let's get on to the meat of this stuff. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to break a promise. So you know how I said I wouldn't pump lava? Well, I'm gonna have to break that promise. <laughs> Mostly because, okay, so the main reason why um, I'm not pumping it for, I'm not pumping it for power, for magmatic dynamos. My power, my power needs are actually already met pretty well. Um, I need lava for obsidian. So there's a couple ways to get, and I mean, in the end, oh, I guess I could use a lava fabricator factory, huh? Cause it just uses power. But I mean, really it's just, it's just more simpler to be honest, actually. hmm. Let's back it up. I actually just might do this. This might actually, a lava factory might actually be better for me. Yeah, because I can just keep it localized here. Yeah, you know, you know what? I take it back. We're not going to, oh God, I made this range pump for nothing. God, God damn it. Damn it. All right, guys, long story short, if you just want to get the gist of things, make ethanol until you get to rainbow generators. But if you want to figure out how I came to that conclusion, stay tuned for the next 20 minutes. So first off, what I want to talk about is where I'm coming from. Um, I was thinking about, oh, what are my next steps when it comes to power generation in this mod pack? Because right now I have steam dynamos, right? I have a steam dynamo that's reinforced and I have uh, a boiler conversion upgrade. I could technically add more um, uh, transmission coil upgrades to increase the amount of steam it has. And then that'll be like 600 millibuckets per tick, right? That's about 100 millibuckets per tick extra. So this can now produce 400 EU per tick or about um, 800 millibuckets of steam also translates to about 1,600 RF per tick. And another thing, when you want to convert steam to power, you also have the Greg Tech turbines. Right, you have like the advanced turbines or the turbo steam turbine from Greg Tech. My opinion is to just not use these at all, even though they might have a quote unquote simpler recipe because it's just polyethylene and stainless steel That's and, and, and gold. It, it's not very expensive at all. The, the big issue is that the circuits start to make this uh, recipe a little bit more annoying. If you start using circuits for your power generation, your circuit requirements drastically scale up. And even though you're supposed to have circuits automated to a large degree, you still don't want to use circuits if you can't have to. Because like, let's be honest here, if you make a steam dynamo, look how easy it is still, right? It's just wrought iron, some gold, red alloy, a lot of basic materials you can get from deep mob learning, or you can get in mass just from doing simple mining. And also if you want to upgrade it, right, then if you think the augments are expensive, they're also not really. Like, you know, this is conductive iron, this is energetic alloy, sterling silver. In fact, sterling silver is just, you know, silver and copper inside a blast furnace. They're not that big of a deal in my opinion. The next part you want to look at is also, hey, um, about these conversions. Augments, they do require materials, but you want to compare that to circuits. Circuits are just annoying. In my opinion, you can always just, if you want to do single block generators, just always put the turbine conversion augments inside a dynamo. 
So that rules out, once again, Greg Tech power converters from steam to power. Now, how do you get the fuel? Aside from sugarcane, really, in my experience, the only other good burning fuel is you can actually put cold coke in here, right? Anything that's furnace fuel. But in order to get cold coke or charcoal, you need to have an infinite wood source. And a lot of this stuff is just really unlocked behind that tungsten steel for or the slice and splice, which requires a tungsten steel. That's EV. So I don't want to ride this all the way till EV. I, I want a better power source in between then. Plus, you also need to make ethanol, which is for a lot of plastic crafting later. Once again, that's the first signal that I should be pushed towards ethanol. Second signal is going back to my magmatic dynamos like i said before i'm um, gonna explain why i'm not going to be using them but one interesting thing was that in magmatic dynamos they can also take in blazing pyrothium and it actually has a pretty high rf output which is about 2 million rf problem with that though is that to get an infinite source of blazing pyrothium deep mob learning is your um pretty much your only choice i mean i guess you can automate elemental reduction fluid that also requires pulsating dust which once again ties back in if you're automating pulsating dust why not use that just to make the polymer clay instead for deep mob learning and actually that's, that's what all goes back to and this is also why deep mob learning in my opinion can't really work well is because deep mob learning is also limited to ev and what i mean by that is if you want to automate it and go infinite with deep mob learning that's possible but you can't do that till EV because of this pulsating dust recipe, which requires ender pearl and which, you know, it ties back down to titanium. So not still EV, still kind of annoying to get to. So where am I going with all this? Basically, the point I'm trying to get at is if anything requires deep mob learning, you, you need to find a way to solve this pulsating dust conundrum. So that also ends up ruling out reactant dynamos because a lot of the reactant dynamo recipes are also dependent on deep mob learning byproducts to get energy. And it's like once you get to this stage, you can go infinite. Like that's that's a given, but it's getting there. That's the issue. So, OK. So that rules out most of these dynamos. So if the dynamos are gone, let's look at all the generators, right? So let's look at the XU2 generators. I don't think they're good. Um, I think they're only good when you want to do full automation for the rainbow generator. But until then, in my opinion, it's just to avoid it, right? So that leaves you, what, what, the coal generator? Not good either. You don't have an automatic source of charcoal. And I want a passive, like, let's be honest, I want a passive generator. Because sometimes, due to my schedule, I might not be able to log in for three days. Like, for example, I haven't, you know, really played Minecraft two to three days. That's why I thought this intermediate section would be a good segue into my next video because let's be honest i'm gonna be clueless and i need to spend like five minutes figuring out what i'm doing leaf feeding generator actually that's disabled so that doesn't work ultimate generator that's not a real generator it's just a block added by content tweaker actually let me verify that yeah you can't even right place it okay so you have draconic evolution generator well that's behind draconium so let's not even approach that okay zombie generators rank of zombie generators ender generators so these are actually kind of interesting however they're just not good enough in my opinion so let's put the highest capacitor in here right and then with the alter do with the void recipe, like, are they viable or are they easier versus other options? So like this produces 540, um, forge energy per tick, but really like, why would I care about that when I can just make more steam dynamos that are reinforced that produce about 400 RF and these things can be upgraded to signal them, right? And if I have a signal them upgrade kit, let's just see how much better it is. You know, it's 800 RF per tick and that's already way overproducing what this ender generator is. And steam is way easier to produce than do with the void. Because do with the void requires a large vat array and a lot of these grains of vibrancy and grains of pizzality. This is just way more complicated than just burning something inside a furnace. So that rules out that generator. Uh, Franken zombie generator also kind of falls to a similar thing. It doesn't have high enough throughput compared to an upgraded steam dynamo. And using nutrient, even though it's a little bit simpler, it's not as good. Like here, look at this. You can still just use water, but still need a large array of these things to actually get any solid throughput out. This is actually, if you were still going for this route though, it is still better than the ender generator. But in the end, backing up is that it's, it, you can't beat steam. Oh, actually I just, I didn't even look at the recipe. So this also requires a soul binder, you know, which requires tungsten steel. So once again, if you have tungsten steel, you might as well go make a farming station, which lets you make automatic charcoal inside a pyrolease oven and automatic wood. We're not even at that stage yet. So it defeats the purpose of the conversation. So let's go back to generators again. What are we reviewing? I already ruled out most XU2 generators because I think most of them don't really apply, but that brings us back to greg tech however i was talking about earlier i was saying that steam generators are just strictly or these steam turbines are worse than um, the steam dynamos but what about the boilers is this steam dynamo better than the greg tech boiler that's the next thing i decided to look into so greg tech has a bunch of different boilers well first they have single block boilers but those are so bad compared to a steam dynamo with the boiler conversion so i was like all right why not look into large bronze boilers and these things are hefty right this this one outputs 900 millibuckets per tick but once again this puts out 800 millibuckets per tick once you have the augments although this is just mostly bronze and circuits 
right? Because you need to have a large bronze boiler, you need to have circuit good. So this steam dynamo already produces 800 millibuckets per tick, 400 millibuckets normally without any augments. So this is already outperforming the uh, large, this is already matching performance with a large bronze boiler, so I'm not really attracted to this. How about this one? It's 1,600 millibuckets per tick with a large steel boiler. That's also an attractive idea. And more importantly, they can also burn liquid Greg Tech fuel. So if you didn't know about that, if you look at the boilers from Greg Tech, they can actually burn a lot of fuels. So if I look at uses, oh, you know what? I guess I can't actually do that. But how it works is that they can burn solid fuels like charcoal, cold coke, even drawers. You know, if it, if it has a burn time inside a furnace, it can be burned inside a boiler. It can also burn liquid fuels and it actually has a slight efficiency gain when you burn it inside a liquid fuel. So that's a nice way to actually produce additional steam out of it. And in fact, if you wanted to look at the accuracy of it, let's say that if you had ethanol, right? So this is, I'm jumping a little bit forward here, but for the sake of example, let's say if you had ethanol within uh, Grey Tech, ethanol can be used inside a diesel generator to make about, you know, 192,000 EU for one bucket of ethanol or 1,000 millibuckets. So if you actually put that inside a fully heated uh, Grey Tech community edition boiler and by the way these boilers are different from real craft boilers they do not consume more fuel fully heated they consume the same amount of fuel no matter what they do however the only difference is that the hotter they get the more steam that they produce and the more water that they consume also the amount of water they consume is actually really really tiny like i can take this like this infinite water source like this is this is really slow right you can easily outpace this with just a normal infinite water source right and this is the steel level remember that this is the steel level as i was saying the hotter they get the more steam that they produce and the point I was trying to get is that if you burn ethanol inside the Greg Tech boilers, you will actually get a little bit more energy burning ethanol into steam, which then translates into steam power. The only problem with this is, is it worth the additional costs? Because setting up this steel boiler does require a fair amount of circuits, right? It requires advanced circuits, it requires solid steel machine casings. In fact, really the biggest problem is the circuit. But this is only for the large steel boiler controller itself, uh, where you need four circuits. But if you want to get an array of like six of these, right? So you want to make like 1,600 steam uh, millibuckets per tick, you, you are going to need a fair amount of circuits. Now, this is just in comparison to the steam dynamo boilers. And the other thing I want to reiterate is that these steam dynamos actually, they, they cannot burn ethanol. So that's, that's the big one. So if you really want to go the ethanol route, you can either put it inside a boiler or you can just make a bunch of diesel generators for posterity. A large titanium boiler has really good significant gains. It's 3,700 millibuckets per tick compared to its predecessor, 1,600. And tungsten steel also has a ridiculous 7,800 millibuckets per tick. But in my opinion, tungsten steel boilers are almost never worth it just because they require circuit masters. That's a tier six circuit. You know what you can do with that? You can make a friggin' uh, fusion reactors with tier six circuits. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> just if, if, you, if, you, if you see someone making if you see a friend making tons of steel boilers, do your friend a favor and tell them to quit that immediately because they're just burning resources. So this brings us back to ethanol, right? I was talking about ethanol before. I was like, all right, ethanol is a pretty solid start. And why is ethanol a solid start? Well, let's go back because ethanol is such an easy, straightforward conversion ratio. It's just you have ethanol and you get it from biomass. A, thousand, a bucket of biomass equals 700 millibuckets of ethanol. Biomass, very simply, you just get from brewing sugarcane. Easiest thing in the world, okay? You can also get it from brewing cactus, so that makes snad even more OP. But, like, let's let's go off with sugarcane um, because I already have an established sugarcane setup you saw from previous episodes. So ethanol can actually be used to chemically react to make biodiesel. And you can see inside the scripts, there's a different catalyst that you can combine it with. Or technically, ethanol is the catalyst because there's more there's more seed oil or fish oil then there is ethanol when you want to make biodiesel, right? It's just not worth making these catalysts. It, it's, it's not. I understand that Damien, it's, it's cool. I, I appreciate the effort from the mod pack dev for including stuff like canola oil, right? I also appreciate for, like, you can actually add, um, you can add refined canola oil into the, the mix. I think that's kind of cool, but it's just not worth it. It's not. And this is what I mean by the math. So let's just take off seed oil, for example, right? So ethanol feeds into seed oil uh, ethanol sorry ethanol and seed oil can make six thousand six buckets of biodiesel however how much ethanol can you make from sugarcane it takes about one sugarcane makes you know 100 millibuckets of biomass which tra translates into 70 millibuckets of ethanol right so one sugarcane is about 70 millibuckets of ethanol 
So really, to to get a bucket of ethanol, it's just like a couple of machines, two machines, and about let's say I don't know what's a th what's one thousand divided by seventy. 14, I guess. Yeah, it takes about 13, uh, 14 to 15 um, sugarcane. And that's that's a tiny amount. However, how do I get the seed oil? The seed oil is a giant pain in the butt. So I can, yes, I can technically use sugarcane seeds, right? Once again, proving how OP sugarcane is. Like, who, I didn't know that this was the superfood of the world. But uh, right here, right? Each sugarcane only makes 10 millibuckets of seed oil. So I'll need seven sugarcane on this side and then hella fluid extractors, right? Because I need to be producing, according to my spreadsheet here, I need to be producing 50 millibuckets per tick of seed oil. And this is this is all based on a ridiculous assumption that I, I wanted to make enough biodiesel per tick. And this is a ridiculous assumption. Honestly, this is you don't need to do this. But I just started with a really high assumption because when I tend to do analysis and look at assumptions, and this is anything, it's not only Minecraft, this is also like in my job, I tend to start at an extreme end just to see how the numbers lie. I, I know it's extreme, and I know they might not have real-world applications, but if the numbers do work out, so be it. And this is based on the fact that this recipe takes one second to complete, to produce 750 millibuckets of C10 boosted diesel, one second. I want to say, hey, I'm going to have a hypothetical scenario where I just run this recipe all the time. <laughs> so I want to have a large enough production recipe where I can make 750 millibuckets of C10 boosted diesel every single second, or, you know, 750 divided by 20. That's like, I want to make 375 millibuckets. Sorry. Um, I want to make, I don't know, what's, what's 750 divided by 20. I want to make 37.5 millibuckets of C10 boosted diesel per tick. And if you have 37.5 millibuckets of C10 boosted diesel per tick, that lets you have a pretty strong generation ratio of uh, you can run about, you know, 27K or, um, EU per tick in your base easily. So you can get up to ludicrous voltage. You can run a whole entire ludicrous voltage base constantly. And that's assuming no buffer because once again, diesel generators are smart. They'll buffer. I'm just going to actually verify my math again. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can have about 27K EU per tick if you can, you know, max out this uh, recipe. But now going back to it. What do I need to do to max out this recipe? So if you look at it, it's you need to produce 50 millibuckets per tick of seed oil, right? The math ended up working out to be like 75 fluid extractors. You know, that's that's an insane amount of fluid extractors in my opinion. And these are overclocked already. These are already overclocked fluid extractors. And that means you need to produce, um, if you need to produce 50 millibuckets per tick of seed oil, how much? And each fluid extractor after being overclocked only produces about... 0.667 millibuckets per tick. So you also not only need to have 75 fluid extractors, you need to have 75 sugar cane per tick. Per tick. This is not this is not per second. That's like 1,500 sugar cane. And once again, this is this is assuming you want to get to LUV based on C10 boosted diesel and no buffering at all. No buffering. This, these are large amounts, but that's 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 hella sugar cane. And once again, you're comparing that just to get that little bit of a bonus. It's much easier for me to scale my ethanol production, right? 10 times over. How much worse is ethanol than C10 boosted diesel? Ethanol is uh Ethanol is 192,000 EU per tick. C10 boosted diesel is 720,000 or 720 EU per tick, right? Because if you look at it, it's, I know it says 1440, but this is two millibuckets of C10 boosted diesel. So that's about, so that's like, you only get, it's only three times better. If you're going seed oil, the end conclusion is that it's not better to upgrade to C10 boosted diesel, or it's not even worth it to even upgrade to biodiesel. So that brings us to the next one, canola oil, crystallized oil, refined canola oil, also not worth it. Fish oil, also not worth it. So let's, let, let, let's look, I was looking at the fish, um, I was looking at fish oil, right? First, you can make rich aqua chow. That's fine. You can set up another word form, farm. Um, you can set up slime farm. You can set up wood pulp. And in fact, this actually goes back to, it's just like wood pulp, also a pain in the ass because if you need to get infinite wood, you're going to need tungsten steel. You're going to need EV. And I guess you can break it up into progression, but I was at a point that like, hey, I just want to do power generation and not worry about it for a while. Not until I get to like a rainbow generator. So I don't want to redo my whole entire power progression once I get a farming station. But like, look at this. So Aqua Chow is already out um, just because wood is so farther. But you know what? These things don't even need, aquatic things don't even need Aqua Chow to, uh, to work. They can actually, it's just a multiplier. But still, aquatic entanglers only work once every 7,200 ticks. They'll produce one fish every one, um, once every six minutes. And then you can divide that time in three if you place at least 30 blocks of water within a five by five by two area. 
between them. And you can even further decrease that by another three times. So you get 7,200 divided by nine, right? Because, you know, three squared, if you put it in an ocean, it's like, all right, if I put it in an ocean, I can make more aquatic entanglers. However, it also required chunk loading, which will kind of break my previous promise of trying to not chunk load externally because there are um, because you know this is there are players out there who can't pump from the nether so at the same time if you can't pump from the nether you'll either have to move your base to an ocean which is not an option for some people for some people so in the end long story short i needed like 200 fishers and this is assuming that on average all of these give very various amounts of fish oil this is like 40 fish oil salmon's kind of nice at 60 fish oil puffer fish is the king at like oh wait no puffer fish are really bad at giving fish oil Clownfish, though. Clownfish is a king of giving fish oil. 70 fish oil. I averaged it all out. The expected value of fish oil ended up becoming like 55. Um, I just decided to be a little bit generous and said that expected output would be like 50 fish oil on average per production cycle. You still need like 200 fishers. And this is assuming that this is in the ocean, that this is uh, 30 blocks of water. You can get bonuses. It can be a little bit faster if, um, if it's raining. But considering that an aquatic entangler requires, you know, a device frame, which requires annoying ass mana fusing, it's like 1,600 mana fusing. It's this is not worth my time, man. This is like hella titanium as well to go the fish oil route. Rules out fish oil. Well, let's go back to biodiesel, right? All right, that didn't work. What's my next plan? Well, then I can actually do canola oil. But canola oil suffers from the same thing. There's such a large discrepancy, and canola oil cannot be farmed fast. There's there's no like growth acceleration. You can actually get canola oil pretty fast if you wanted to do canola with phytogenic insulators. But this goes back just like the aqua chow. Rich phyto grow requires wood pulp, which is fairly difficult to automate all the way. Not do it passively, so it requires babysitting and appetite, which is right now in my opinion impossible to automate. So yes, you can get a large amount of appetite just from smelting the ores or from uh macerating the ores right 10 appetite then you autoclave all that however the problem is that you'll st it's not infinite you know it's uh what i want is infinite what i want is passive what i want is not babysitting and and something that's easy to scale and that always goes back to ethanol so anything that's also dependent upon either farming stations fast crops or a phytogenic insulator just not available to me at the moment and in fact i'm not even this is actually one thing that my appeal is that I, I would prefer for this to be completely automatable before you can just have a really complicated um co like it's weird that i can automate aluminium with a cobblestone generator setup but i cannot automate phyto grow with an automatic cobblestone generator setup my opinion is that i think that you should let normal base phyto grow be automatable and then make rich phyto grow um, require appetite along with the ammonia so have rich phyto grow or even the flux phyto grow is to be the one that requires the appetite but let the base phyto grow be automatable going back that rules out canola oil because you just can't produce canola however you can actually make canola even faster right if you refine it so i did the math is that you actually need to produce 50 millibucks per tick of canola oil which is way out that's so many farmers or that's a lot of phytogenic insulators which is not possible with the phyto grow i have okay refine canola oil and refine canola oil is super easy in fact it was almost a waste of time showing how bad canola oil was just because it's so easy to refine it it, it, or so easy yet yeah, it's so easy to ferment it and to refine canola oil because in fact in my opinion this recipe is so bad it should just it should just be gone you shouldn't even have canola oil into biodiesel i think it's just a waste of time but if you have refined canola oil this um it's super easy to do and it cuts it cuts your required production in half because it produces twelve thousand biodiesel instead of six thousand biodiesel when you have normal canola oil and it's even easier right it's even easier in my opinion to do crystallized oil well that's actually it's not as easy as making the jump from normal canola oil to refined canola oil but re crystallized is also easy and if you want to know how to get crystallized oil it's uh, you throw in a crystallized seed into uh, in front of a atomic reconstructor and then you take that crystallized canola oil seed and you throw it into refined canola oil I have this small automated setup here right now. Well, actually, I had it even. I had another setup here. Uh, this is the smarter setup. Okay, so basically, this setup was designed um, to filter out. Normally, this setup would be easier, and it does require AE2, but it's not that hard to get it because all you need is a fluid annihilation plane and one ME chest. To be honest, you have, it has an observer. It's checking out every single time when it actually works. However, there's two problems with this. First of all, this mod is just frustrating. Um, I understand it's an aesthetic choice, but this actually started to introduce a fail rate into the precision dropper, which is a little bit frustrating. Actually, I'm not I'm not sure what's introducing the fail rate or how the mechanics of it, how, of how it's failing. But when I put in 192 um, canola oil seeds, I only got like 174. So I was losing out on some canola oil processing for crystallized oil. 
when I removed realistic item drops, I had the full amount. But it's frustrating because this is not a client side only mod. Um, servers have it. So realistic item drops just, it sucks because con realistic item drops kind of ruins this process. Sorry for the French, but I fucking hate that mod. I think that, for, first of all, it's aesthetics is just shit. <laughs> oh man, sorry, fun white guy, but I think it's aesthetics doesn't fit with Minecraft. But that's an opinion. That's a personal opinion. That's fine. But when it starts affecting functional automations in the pack, it stops being an aesthetic only mod, right? It's not aesthetic anymore. But that's why it's also a little bit more frustrating. Now, the second element is this can also be made easier if there was a scanner from uh, extra utilities. Um, I have to use an observer, and sometimes observer is kind of annoying because it can send it out double pulse it can be a little bit less efficient than if i just had an extra utility scanner and in fact it's annoying because you don't have anything in this mod pack which has a lot of automation um, challenges that lets you read block states or blocks and fluids in world right like normally integrated dynamics can solve that rest solve that problem here we just have vanilla methodologies abusing an observer which is fine in vanilla but when you have a large more complicated challenges and setups and you have access to better tech and technology to address those setups it's just a weird discrepancy to not have something to read block states in world going back to this this rules out crystallized oil um, that fail rate I mean, maybe I have too high of a standards, but that fail rate plus with how much I have to produce, how much canola oil I have to produce with all the extra effort, why would I do that when I can just scale up ethanol? And you can also make the argument that, hey, you still need to make these anyway because they're crafting recipes, right? c boosted diesel is used a lot in crafting later down the line. And that's completely fair, but I'm just going to use sugarcane for that because these other methods lack the appropriate tools or not as fun to make or just straight up unreliable so that's why i'm not going to go those route and if i make cetane boosted diesel honestly it's just going to be for crafting i'm not going to be using cetane boosted diesel for power in greg block where i had a large cetane boosted diesel setup that was possible because you had ex nihilo with luck of the uh, luck of the sea enchantments on sieves so you can sieve anything and get fish so that made fish really easy here it's not that easy because once again like i said you need to have 200 fishers with the bonus upgrade and with flux chow to get even close to the amount of um the fish that i was getting in greg block so that's a huge stark difference in terms of possible methods and then the last part is that it's kind of weird if i can use seed oil right i can use empowered canola seeds for seed oil in fact this recipe is kind of it's also puzzling because look at this it requires five canola seeds and once again, we already talked about that the choke point is getting how much canola oil you can get. Or the choke point is canola seeds are the choke point, right? Because it's super fast to turn one canola seed into a crystallized seed. It's just one activation atomic reconstructor. So given that choke point, this makes 50 millibuckets of seed oil. But you require five canola seeds to make one empowered canola seed. So that's, that's also ridiculous because it only makes 250. Like I would rather just empower all five of these. Or not empower. I would rather crystallize all five of these and then extract that five times rather than using an hv fluid extractor there's no benefit no bonus to using empowered canola oil seeds plus there is no uses for empowered oil for some reason the biodiesel generation stops it stops at crystallized oil so there's no empowered oil being used for biodiesel so maybe that's another option that can be added to make empowered oil better for c10 boosted diesel but since that's not present that limits my options so going back to the spreadsheet, right? All right, fine. Uh, what else is there? Pneumostatic dynamos. Well, pneumostatic dynamos are kind of interesting because they have the lapidary conversion kit. Everything else is also DML, but you still need to, let's say, if you use pneumostatic dynamo, you can get coins. You can get coins from using polymer clay and, they, and it is power positive even after you take the uraninite and polymer clay into account, but you need to be at EV to go infinite with that. You can either bum rush EV, right? You can either bum rush EV or you can just choose another option altogether. And the most efficient and most power positive net loop that I found was put in the lapidary conversion kit, make diamonds, and you can get diamonds from the shulker, right? So that's like 1.2 million times that by six. So that's uh, that's a better output than the others. I thought that was I thought that was more interesting, but overall, it still ties back to automating. You know, it still goes back to automating the pulsating dust, which is only available at EV voltage. So after talking myself in circles, going, um, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. In the end, scaling ethanol is just so easy. Maybe the problem here isn't all the power problems. Maybe the problem here is just how powerful ethanol is. And maybe ethanol should just be nerfed. I, I mean, I can understand that upset a lot of players, but if this is like where the pack incentives, you know, guide me towards, well then, that's where I'm going.
All right, so I'm back thanks to the magic of editing. I'm coming from the future. Ignore all extra things you see in the background because I wanted to make a couple of the corrections. So first off, I was talking about that deep mob learning can be a good source for a lot of power. And then I said it didn't work because that you couldn't automate the polymer clay. So I did actually miss something. You can actually get pulsating dust from smelting resin and clathrate. And resin and clathrate, I, I ignored this for a second because I thought nether quartz wasn't renewable. It turns out it is. There is a recipe to autoclave, sorry, to electrolyze glass. It can be done at LV as well. It gives you one nether quartz. One nether quartz with one resident ender, which is extracted from an ender pearl that you can obviously get from the loot fabricator, can give you a net positive feedback loop. So this reverses my opinion on a lot of stuff. The reactant dynamos, a lot of stuff that's dependent on polymer clay, they're good to go. They can be inside a passive loop with amazing benefits. So I was talking about how ethanol might be like too powerful. Well, in terms of sheer power, yes, I do think ethanol uh, beats all the other methods but the deep mob learning route is good because it has so many byproducts it is always constantly producing you other good items aside from overworld dn matter and hellish matter in fact you might produce so much of the byproduct matter that you you might even have to void it the second part was that there was an update i'm on omnifactory 1.04 i'm not updating to 1.05 yet but there was an update where they added this oil drilling rig it's kind of that multi-block that you've seen right here there's a couple of things I edited the JSON myself. I made some adjustments to the mod pack files because it's actually a bit uh, clunky how it's built. The first thing is that if you build the pipe going down, downwards up, the oil drilling rig does not recognize that uh, formation just because it's dependent on the meta. You see it's serialized metadata one. It's looking for serialized metadata one. So this is valid. I edited the JSON. So, you know, the, the specifications of how the machine is built so that it can actually allow for that. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you want to replace your own JSON. Also made it so that you can be flexible of where the fluid output hatches and where the energy input hatches go. So you could technically build a correct model of the oil drilling rig to have two energy hatches or two output hatches but really you need an energy hatch and an output hatch because it takes an energy and makes you oil speaking of speaking of that you know if you weren't paying attention you don't know all it does is that it takes energy and makes oil it requires 3,500 FE per tick, so that's roughly about EV energy. It's well worth it because every 100 ticks, it gives you a bucket of oil. And this this is amazing, to be honest. Um, this it, It's so good that my plan right now is to move off of ethanol onto oil drilling rigs, and I might set up this orientation of oil drilling rigs. The plan is to probably have four of these oil drilling rigs, right? and 16 distillation towers processing the outputs and then transforming that into diesel cetane boosted diesel as well as using the other oil byproducts like the hydrogen sulfide or the necessary uh sulfur not necessary sulfur the additional sulfur other than that i still think everything else i said counts as semi-decent advice or best i can hope for is not awful and that's all i aim for not being awful